We continue now with part two of our numbering systems lecture, and this is the octal numbering system. So let's go um, through this one. Again, you should have already uh, read through the lecture material and probably have watched the first video, and that way you kind of get an idea of how this one is going to work. Remember, octal is actually a base eight numbering system, so the numbers go from zero to seven. Um, we'll go through each octal digit representing three binary digits, but if you think about it, um, the number seven in binary is one, one, one. So that's three bits of information in binary. Um, octal is just another shorthand means of, of representing binary numbers. Um, if you see a whole page full of ones and zeros, it's very hard to, to kind of make any sense out of all these ones and zeros. So octal is a way, uh, kind of a, an easier way to enter binary numbers without having to type in a bunch of ones and zeros. And it's not used as much nowadays as it was. Um, hexadecimal is kind of taken over, but octal may still be used in um, some situations. And there's the numbering systems. Uh, again, it, you should have seen this in your lecture notes. So we're going to do octal to decimal, decimal to octal, binary to octal, and octal to binary. I want you to be able to convert pretty much any direction you can go. So if we convert the number 463, we're going to do it just like we did the binary numbers, except instead of 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, we're going to do 8 to the 0, 8 to the 1st, 8 to the 2nd and on and on. There's the chart, how it's laid out. So zero, 8 to the 0, 8 to the 1, 8 to the 2nd, 8 to the 3rd, 8 to the 4th power. And the first one's always 1, and then 8 to the 1st is 8, and 64, 5, 12, 4096. If you also look, this is times the base. Remember last time it was double because it was base 2. This one is 1 times 8 equals 8. 8 times 8 equals 64. 8 times 64 equals 512. 8 times 512 equals 4096 and you can keep going from there. Put your number underneath 463 and then again multiply and add. So we're take 4 times 64, 6 times 8, and 3 times 1. So you've got 256 plus 48 plus 3 and our answer is 307 in decimal. So the methodology is exactly the same as what we did for binary, except instead of base 2, we have a base 8 number. So everything's dealing with 8s. So let's do another one. We're going to do the number 257. Again, make the chart. And we really only needed 1, 8, and 64. We really didn't need the other ones, so we could have stopped. Put the 257 underneath of it. Multiply those through. So 2 times 64 is 128, 5 times 8 is 40, and 1 times 7 is 7. Add those numbers together and we're equal 175 base 10. So again, make a chart, put your number underneath, multiply, then add. So try some of these examples out. Uh, pause the video and work them out and then come back and I'll show you the answer. Okay, here's the answers, and you'll see that I actually gave you the answers, then I also gave you what you should have done to add those together. So this would have been the numbers that you got to add up to this. If you didn't get this number, go back and make sure these are the numbers you added. If you didn't get these numbers to add, make sure you filled out your chart correctly. Again, most people tend to start with zero is the biggest mistake people make. So don't start at zero. It always starts with a one. Okay, converting from a decimal number to an octal number, if you remember in binary, we divided by 2. We successfully divided by 2, just kept dividing the answer by 2. Since we were going to base 2, that's what we did. This one is going to base 8, so we need to divide it by 8s. So you're going to take the number 249 and divide that by 8. And you actually get, if you look over here, if you take 249 divided by 8, you get 31.125. And if you remember last time I told you if you get a 0.5 times the base, which was 2, it would be 1, which is half of it. That's the way you get your remainders. So you're going to take your whatever your decimal portion of that is and multiply it times your base, and that will give you a remainder. So 249 divided by 8 equals 31 is our whole number part. And then the 0.125, take that to times 8, we give you a remainder of 1. Now we're going to pull this 31 down and divide it by 8. 
So again, 31 divided by 8 equals 3.875. The 3 is our whole number. And to get the remainder, we're going to take the 0.875 times 8, which is our base, and we get a remainder of 7. Bring down the 3. 3 divided by 8 equals 0, so we know we're done. We stop when that equals 0. And to get the remainder, it's that 0.375 times the base, which is 8, which is a remainder of 3. And just like with binary, this is our most significant, this is our least significant. So make the building fall down to the right. And the answer is 371 in octal. One good tip here is if you ever get an 8 or a 9 for an answer, you know you did something wrong because there are no 8s and 9s in octal. So one good thing, double check yourself. Here's some more practice. Pause the video, work them out, and come back and we'll see what the answer are. Make sure you keep all the remainders, including the zeros. Okay, there's the answers. Again, if you didn't get those, go back and, and re-divide. You probably just didn't get a remainder correctly, or um, you didn't divide something correctly. Um, it's really easy to misdivide something, so just don't go double check your work. Okay, moving on. We're going to talk about going from binary to octal. And binary to octal is a little strange because it's grouping of binary numbers. So, But it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. But, but it may take you uh, just a few times to get, get used to doing it. So, so the biggest thing is we're going to convert binary to octal. You remember octal is the biggest number you can have in octal is 7. Well, if you think about binary in 7, a binary 7 is 1, 1, 1. 1, 2, and 4. 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 7. So that's the biggest number we can have as far as the 7 goes. Well, if octal is 7, if you kind of remember 7 equals 3 binary bits, um, you kind of remember groups into the groups of 3. So the way I would probably do this, the easiest way to do it, is to, of course you're going to have it written down, and just take and put big slash marks every third one. So there's three, there's three, and there's three. Okay, three, three, and three. And just write your chart right over top of these. One, two, four, that's one group. One, two, four, there's another group. And one, two, and four, that's another group. And then convert these over to their decimal equivalent. So uh, we've got four plus two, which is six. We've got 2 plus 1, which is 3, and we've got 4 plus 1, which is 5. And that's a base 8 octal number. So, again, divide them up into groups of 3, starting with the least significant side. Put your chart on top of those groupings, 1, 2, and 4. And then just convert these over to their decimal equivalent. So you got 4 plus 2, which is 6. 2 plus 1 is 3 and 4 and 1 is 5. And that's all there is to it. So try these out. Just pause the video and then I'll come back and show you the answers. And here's the answers and you'll notice that at the side here I just kind of showed you where I would have divided these numbers up. I put a little extra space in there. I added a zero here just to make it a group of three. You didn't have to necessarily, but it makes it a little easier to kind of put your chart in there and kind of see it easier if you go ahead and put the zeros in there. If you didn't get these, maybe you divided incorrectly, make sure you got one, two, four, and you restarted at one, two, and four for this one if you've got something uh, really strange here. Again, no eights and nines for octal. Octal does not have eights and nines. Right, if we're going to octal to binary, we're actually going to write down three, or we're going to write down groups of three binary numbers. Um, so three binary bits of information for each number in octal. So if we do seven, four, three, one, so kind of leave yourself some space, seven, four, three, and one. And just underneath these, write, remember there's only four, I mean only three digits, so one, two, four. 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, and 1, 2, 4. So three binary bits of information represents each number. What do we add up here to equal 7? Well, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it would be all 
highs for that one. Four is just four with nothing else. We don't add anything else to the four. Three would be two plus one. So put ones underneath those. And one would just be one. So put ones under these. You can write them together if you want to. Or you can leave them spaced out, whichever way you want to do them. And that would be the decimal, or the binary equivalent to the octal number 7431. Um, same process we used while ago, we're just doing it backwards. We're just going, going the other way. And notice I kept the zero. Make sure you keep the zeros inside. Um, don't drop the zeros because if you did, let's say if I drop these leading zeros right here, our number would be, which is quite a bit different than that. So you do not want to do that. Don't don't drop zeros. Make sure you keep them all in there. Should always be groups of three. No no more, no less. Now here's some more practice for you. Just try these out. Pause the video. Come back for the answers. Okay, there's the answers. Check yourself off, and I left a little space there so it makes it a little bit easier to read when you're grading yourself. So grade yourself and see how you did, and if you have any problems or questions, you can email me. I'll try to help you out as the best I can. And this concludes the second part under the numbering systems for octal numbers.